Lecture 7. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In the previous lesson, we looked at defining objectives and appropriateness in business and technical communication. Today, we will talk about accuracy, clarity, conciseness, and coherence when writing for technical uh, communication. In this lecture, we will talk about the characteristics of uh, effective technical communication uh, and also learn to recognize and cultivate the qualities of effective technical communication. Um, good technical communication is accurate, clear, concise, coherent, and appropriate. We've talked of appropriateness. Let's now look at the other qualities. In the prose of science and technology, these qualities are sometimes difficult to achieve. And not only do science and technology depend heavily on specialized concepts and terminologies, they also make use of numbers and graphics. And that's why it sometimes becomes difficult for uh, science, uh, scientific and technical writing to be um, concise and clear to a lot of people. Let's consider an example of technical writing where a lot of scientific uh, terminology has been used. The flow of electrical current can induce the migration of impurities or other defects through the bulk of a solid. This process is called electromigration. In simple electromigration, the force on the defect is thought to have two components. The first component is the force created by direct interaction between the effective charge of the def defect and the electric field that drives the current. The second component, called the wind force, is the force caused by the scattering of electrons at the defect. Now, this is uh, a text taken from a scientific uh, journal, and it's accurate in two ways. It is stylistically accurate in its precise use of language, and it's technically accurate in its use of specialized terms, such as electromigration, charge, electric field, and scattering, whose meanings are based on the context of a technical discipline. Now, both kinds of accuracy, accuracy of phrasing and accuracy of technical concept, are very important in technical and scientific and uh, professional writing. Uh, this example that we, talk, uh, we just looked at is also clear because it is written in simple direct sentences. Even though it is heavily technical, the terminology is very technical, it's clear because the sentences are direct and they're simple. Although the technical context is specialized, uh, the word order also is simple, it's restrained, the structure is easy to understand. So despite the technical realm of the uh, topic, it's easy to understand. Halanke ye bhot technical concepts hai, technical terms hai, lekin phir bhi jo us example mein likha hua tha, agar usko padha jaye, to usko samajhne mein itta itti mushkil nahi aati padne wale ko. Part of this clarity is achieved by the rhetorical device of defining a term, electro migration. Ab jo zyada clarity is example mein aayi, jo zyada vaze ye example hua, wo is baat se bhi hua ki electro electro migration ki jo term thi, usko define kiya gaya. Aur uski wajah se, kyunke shuru mein padne wale ko ek definition mil gayi ki ye term hai kya, uski wajah se aage jo padha tha, us usko samajhne mein bhi asani ho gayi. The example is concise in its use of a minimum number of words to express the basic idea of electromigration. And also, it's not wordy. It does not digress from the point. Bohat zyada mushkil alfaz istamal nahi kiye gaye hain. Bohat jahaan ek lafz se kaam chal jata hai, wahaan ek hi lafz istamal kiya gaya hai. Ye nahi ki ek lafz ke bajaye teen chaar alfaz istamal kiye gaye hain, padne wale ko impress karne ke. Kyunki uski wajah se phir, jo text hai, wo confusing ho jata hai. The example is also coherent because it's de it uh, develops the subject matter in an easy to follow manner. Uh, there is a clear line of thinking. The sentences are linked together by words like this process, the first component, the second component. Ye links hain, uh, the first, the second, this process. Ye refer kar rahe hain aur cheezon ko jo text ke andar hain aur isliye jo पढ़ने वाली की लाइन ऑफ थिंकिंग है वो टूटती नहीं है जो एक सोच है वो उस टेक्स्ट के अंदर ही रहती है और ये पता रहता है कि किस चीज के बारे में बात हो रही है क्योंकि क्लियर मार्कर्स हैं टेक्स्ट के अंदर फाइनली द एग्जांपल इज आल्सो अप्रोप्रिएट टू इट्स पर्पस बिकॉज़ इट्स प्रेजेंटिंग अ डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन सो द वे इट्स रिटन इज अप्रोप्रिएट बिकॉज़ इट्स ऑब्वियसली मेंट फॉर अ साइंटिफिक ऑडियंस इट्स the, read, uh, the writer knows that the audience are educated readers of science and 
दे मे नॉट बी एक्सपर्ट्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी जिसके बारे में ये इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन की बात हो रही है इसलिए लिखने वाले ने जरूरी समझा है कि इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन को डिस्क्राइब किया जाए क्योंकि उसको ये पता है कि इन रीडर्स को हालांकि ये साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी के एक्सपर्ट्स हैं लेकिन इनको इस कॉन्सेप्ट के बारे में शायद ना पता हो लेकिन बाकी फिर मजीद उसने जो टर्मिनोलॉजी इस्तेमाल की उस हर चीज को डिफाइन नहीं किया क्योंकि उसको ये पता है कि मेरे ऑडियंस को इनकी समझ आ जाएगी ना वट इज एक्यूरेसी एंड वाई इज इट इम्पोर्टेंट यू इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट दैट यू कल्टिवेट एक्यूरेसी इन यू राइटिंग एंड इट्स द केयरफुल कन्फॉर्मिंग ऑफ ट्रूथ और फैक्ट्स and it has it has three main aspects there is document accuracy there is stylistic accuracy and there is technical accuracy ab ye dekhte hain ki ye teeno accuracies ka matlab kya hai aur ye kyun zaruri hain document accuracy stylistic accuracy technical accuracy document accuracy aakhir kya hai aur iski uh, zarurat kya hai ek document ke andar uh, it refers to the proper coverage of your topics in appropriate detail jo bhi aapka document mein topic hai uski उसमें कितनी डिटेल है उसको आपने कितना कवर किया हुआ है डिटेल बहुत ज्यादा तो नहीं है बहुत कम तो नहीं है और एक्यूरेसी कितनी है कित, कितनी सच्चाई है उस डॉक्यूमेंट में ऑफन एंड एक्यूरेट डॉक्यूमेंट नीड्स टू फोकस क्लियरली ऑन अ प्रॉब्लम डॉक्यूमेंट एक्यूरेसी इज जनरली कल्टिवेटेड बाय अ क्लियर प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट एंड बाय प्रिलिमिनरी आउटलाइन ज्यादातर वक्त डॉक्यूमेंट एक्यूरेसी तभी आती है एक डॉक्यूमेंट uh, में जब जो भी प्रॉब्लम हो वो क्लियरली बताई जाए डॉक्यूमेंट में और एक शुरू में एक उस जो भी आ, लिखा हो जो भी डॉक्यूमेंट हो उसकी आउटलाइन भी दी जाए तभी वो डॉक्यूमेंट में फिर एक्यूरेसी का चांस जो है वो बढ़ जाता है दीज राइटिंग टूल्स हेल्प यू फोकस योर राइटिंग एफर्ट्स बाय रिड्यूसिंग योर डेटा इन अ वे दैट सॉल्व अ थेरेटिकल और प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम सो बिकॉज दीज आर बेसिकली टूल्स दैट यू हैव इफ यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट और इफ यू हैव अ प्रिलिमिनरी आउटलाइन दीज आर टूल्स दैट विल हेल्प यू एज अ राइटर आइडेंटिफाई योर गोल्स बेटर दैट विल हेल्प यू एज अ राइटर मेक श्योर दैट योर डॉक्यूमेंट इज एक्यूरेट एंड दे ऑल्सो सर्व एज अ काइंड ऑफ अ चेक फॉर यू सो दैट यू डू नॉट डाइग्रेस फ्रॉम योर पॉइंट आप आप जो जो आपके नुकते हैं आप उस तक ही रहें आप इधर उधर कोई और बात अगर करने जा, करने लगेंगे तो आप जब अपनी प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट और आउटलाइन देखेंगे तो आपको अंदाजा हो जाएगा कि हम जो हैं वो हम पॉइंट से हट रहे हैं ना व्हाट इज स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी एंड व्हाई इज दिस इंपॉर्टेंट स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी कंसर्न द केयरफुल यूज ऑफ लैंग्वेज टू एक्सप्रेस मीनिंग एक्यूरेट लैंग्वेज रिक्वायर्स द केयरफुल यूज ऑफ पैराग्राफ एंड सेंटेंस स्ट्रक्चर एंड वर्ड चॉइस to describe and analyze your topics effectively whatever uh, paragraph structure word choice uh, sentence structure you are using will affect how effectively you express what you want to say uh, so that then is stylistic accuracy agar aap apne paragraph ko kuch is tarah structure karenge ke padhne wale ko cheez clear na ho ya jo aap kehna cha rahe ho wo paigham na pahunche lekin koi aur paigham pahunche to phir wo डॉक्यूमेंट uh, जो है उसकी एक्यूरेसी कम हो जाएगी क्योंकि पढ़ने वाले को कुछ और मैसेज मिलेगा और आप कोई और मैसेज देना चाह रहे हैं सिर्फ इसलिए कि आपने जो अपने पैराग्राफ को स्ट्रक्चर इस तरह किया या जो आपने अल्फाज इस्तेमाल किए हैं वो कोई मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग क्रिएट कर रहे हैं तो फिर जाहिर है जहां मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग होगी वहां आपकी एक्यूरेसी कम हो जाती है एज ए राइटर यू गेन कमांड ऑफ एक्यूरेसी बाय स्टडिंग द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ स्टाइल एंड बाय लर्निंग टू अप्लाई दीज एलिमेंट्स टू योर ड्राफ्टिंग रिवाइजिंग एडिटिंग एंड प्रूफ रीडिंग जब आप पढ़ेंगे एक डॉक्यूमेंट को अपने दोबारा या जब आप उस, उसको बल्कि जब पहली बार भी जब आप उसको ड्राफ्ट करेंगे अब आप उसके रफ अपने पॉइंट्स बनाएंगे उसको रिवाइज करेंगे एक बार दोबारा पढ़ेंगे उसको एडिट करेंगे दोबारा पढ़ने में जो भी चेंजेस आपने करने होंगे और जब आप उसको प्रूफ रीड करेंगे कुछ गलतियां ढूंढेंगे तो तब आपकी एक्यूरेसी इन सारे पॉइंट्स की वजह से इन चारों स्टेप्स में रिवाइजिंग एडिटिंग सॉरी ड्राफ्टिंग रिवाइजिंग एडिटिंग और प्रूफ रीडिंग के थ्रू आपकी जो एक्यूरेसी है वो आपके डॉक्यूमेंट में बढ़ जाएगी एंड स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी ऑब्वियसली इज ऑल्सो मैटर ऑफ चूजिंग योर वर्ड्स प्रिसाइसली जो लफ्ज बेहतर एक बात को uh, समझा सके वो लफ्ज इस्तेमाल किया जाए तो आपकी जो एक्यूरेसी है वो डॉक्यूमेंट की बढ़ेगी और ये ये भी स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी नहीं आती है ना वट इज टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी वी लुक एट डॉक्यूमेंट एक्यूरेसी एंड स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी What is technical accuracy and why is that important in a document? 
technical accuracy requires stylistic accuracy but is not based solely on it. एक टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी का बहुत अहम हिस्सा स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी भी है जिसके बारे में हमने भी बात की लेकिन इसका यह मतलब नहीं है कि टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी और स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी एक ही चीज है दे आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी कैन बी अ पार्ट ऑफ टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी बट नॉट द होल पार्ट द इफेक्टिव डॉक्यूमेंट इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी मस्ट बी ग्राउंडेड इन अ टेक्निकली एक्यूरेट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट खास करके जब हम साइंटिफिक या टेक्नोलॉजिकल एक्सप्लेनेशन या डिस्क्रिप्शन देंगे तो हमारे जो भी डॉक्यूमेंट है उसमें जाहिर है कि टेक्निकली भी जो हम फैक्ट्स प्रेजेंट करें वो सही हों दुरुस्त हों क्योंकि वरना तो जो हम बात कह रहे हैं वो कहीं से कहीं पहुंच सकती है और उसकी जो पढ़ने वाले की समझ के हिसाब से भी कुछ गलत चीज वो समझ सकते हैं और जो आप दिखाना चाह रहे हैं बिल्कुल आप कोई और चीज भी दिखा सकते हो इसलिए बहुत बहुत जरूरी है कि जो भी आप टेक्निकल टर्म्स इस्तेमाल करें जो भी आप टेक्निकल कॉन्सेप्ट यूज करें एक चीज को एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए वो बिल्कुल वाजे तौर पे हों और सही हों टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी डिपेंड्स ऑन द राइटर्स कंसेप्चुअल मास्टरी ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट एंड इट्स वोकेबलरी एज वेल एज ऑन हिज और हर एबिलिटी टू एनालाइज एंड शेप डेटा विद अ मिनिमम ऑफ डिस्ट्रॉशन नाउ ऑब्वियसली इफ यू एज अ राइटर do not have uh, are not a master at the concepts that you are presenting if you do not know the concepts that you are presenting then your document will not be technically accurate to isliye zaruri hai ke jo likhne wale hon unko apne uh, subject matter ke upar ubur ho taki wo jo likhe wo sahi likhe aur iske ilawa jo wo alfaz istemal kare wo bhi sahi ho taki jo bhi information aap dein usme minimum distortion ho मिनिमम गलती का चांस हो एंड दिस इज वाई इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी देर इज सो मच एम्फोसिस गिवन ऑन मास्टरिंग दिस टेक्निकल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ सब्जेक्ट डेवलपमेंट जब तक आप जब सब्जेक्ट डेवलप करते हैं कोई भी टॉपिक को आप डेवलप करते हैं उसके बारे में लिखते हैं उस इसके लिए बहुत जरूरी है कि टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी हो ताकि कोई गलती का अंदेशा ना रहे ना वॉट अबाउट क्लैरिटी वाई इज क्लैरिटी इंपॉर्टेंट इन टेक्निकल राइटिंग clarity which refers uh, to the ease of understanding is a special problem in technical and professional writing because a lot of the times people find it very difficult to uh, be clear in what they're saying and uh, they either use too many words or they use very long sentences or the information has not been presented properly and therefore it uh, leads to misunderstanding specialized languages mathematically described uh, detailed analyses and complex conce- conceptual schemes can make technical subjects hard to grasp even when uh, prepared by skilled writers and read by expert readers because in technical writing there is so much uh, so much that is difficult to explain and there is so much emphasis on the right language and presenting the concepts in a particular manner if if you vary from those it becomes difficult for you as a writer to explain the concepts and uh, for the reader to understand as well because of the complexity of uh, what you might be explaining uh, and you can increase the clarity of your material by uh, either using uh, structural clarity or stylistic clarity and or con- uh, contextual clarity generally you would be uh, striving for all of these structural stylistic as well as contextual clarity to uh, make your document more clear let's have a look at what these are what is structural clarity and why is it important at the level of the whole document you can promote structural clarity making it easy for the reader to get the large picture so this is from the large part of the document we're looking at the whole document and seeing how we can use structural clarity to make the general image of the whole document more easily accessible to the reader uh, you should use abstracts and other forecasting strategies such as introductions that state the purpose and scope of the document or uh, table of contents etc and because these add to the structural clarity of the document basically structural clarity ka matlab ye hai ki jo document ka structure hai usko hum is tarah improve kare ke padhne wale ke liye aasani ho jo uske jis tarah humne document ko design kiya hua hai wo behtar ho 
और उसमें हम ऐसे एलिमेंट्स डालें जिससे पढ़ने वाले को आसानी हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर टेबल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट्स है तो वो देख के पढ़ने वाले को आसानी होती है पता करने में कि क्या चीज़ कहाँ लिखी हुई है या अगर एब्सट्रैक्ट है या शुरू में एक इंट्रोडक्शन है तो वो ज़रा एक टूल्स मिल जाते हैं रीडर को ना हाउ कैन यू प्रमोट एज आई सेड टेबल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट्स प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट्स इवन स्ट्रेटिजिक रेपिटेशन प्रमोट स्ट्रक्चर क्लैरिटी बहुत बार ये होता है कि हम बहुत सी चीज़ें जानबूझ के रिपीट करते हैं वैसे तो एक डॉक्यूमेंट में uh, बेहतर है कि रेपिटेशन ना हो क्योंकि आपके रीडर्स बोर हो जाते हैं लेकिन अगर आप रिपीट कर रहे हैं तो बहुत स्ट्रेटेजिकली रिपीट करें चीज और ऐसे पॉइंट्स पे करें जहां आपको लगता है कि इस चीज को एम्फोसाइज करना है और ये चीज आपकी स्ट्रक्चरल क्लैरिटी जो है उसको बढ़ाती है ग्राफ्स एंड टेबल्स इफ दे आर इफेक्टिवली डिजाइंड एंड इफेक्टिवली प्लेस हेल्प फोकस एंड दे ऑल्सो क्लैरिफाई इन्फॉर्मेशन दे हेल्प द रीडर इन फोकसिंग ऑन पर्टिकुलर इन्फॉर्मेशन दे ऑल्सो हेल्प यू एज अ राइटर इन एम्फोसाइजिंग पर्टिकुलर इन्फॉर्मेशन तो जो अगर ऐसी इन्फॉर्मेशन है जिसको आप एम्फोसाइज करना चाह रहे हैं तो उसको आप टेबल्स या ग्राफ्स में डालें और उससे आपके जो मटीरियल है उसका फोकस बढ़ जाता है डिस्क्रिप्टिव टाइटल्स एंड फ्रीकुंट सब्जेक्ट हेडिंग्स गाइड रीडर्स एंड दे हेल्प दम इन कीपिंग द लार्ज पिक्चर इन फोकस तो जाहिर है आप बहुत ज्यादा नहीं लेकिन जहां जरूरी हो वहां टाइटल्स हेडिंग्स जो हैं वो बहुत हेल्प करती हैं एक डॉक्यूमेंट को पूरे को स्ट्रक्चर करने में जाहिर है बहुत ज्यादा अगर हेडिंग्स होंगी और हेडिंग्स के नीचे बहुत कम डिस्क्रिप्शन होगी तो वो बिल्कुल मुनासिब नहीं है हेडिंग्स वहां होनी चाहिए जहां मुनासिब हो ना ये कि खामा खामे हेडिंग्स डाली हुई हो ना वट अबाउट स्टाइलिस्टिक क्लैरिटी वाई इज दैट इम्पोर्टेंट Stylistic clarity is promoted by simple direct language, uh, and this simplicity in language is obtained uh, with directly worded sentences. The word, the sentences should be in direct speech. They should be addressed directly to the reader, and th- this simplicity then promotes stylistic clarity. Uh, the sentences should be simple, and they should not be overloaded with information or words. Uh, so that clarity can be increased word choice is also a factor in fact a very important factor in stylistic clarity uh, you should use simple language wherever possible and try to reduce abstract highly specialized terms of science and technology especially if you feel that the audience is not going to understand it if you feel that the audience is expert and they can understand the scientific and technical language then use simple words to counteract to balance out the scientific and technical language so having talked about structural clarity and stylistic clarity let's have a look at contextual clarity and what we mean by that uh contextual clarity in which the importance authorization and implications of your work are made available also contribute to ease of understanding all work has a context and your readers want to understand what the context of your document is zahir hai aapka jo bhi document hai wo kisi context mein likha gaya hai kisi ne aapko kaha hai likhne ko us ya aap kisi ek koi reason hai jiski wajah se aap wo document likh rahe hain us document ko likhne ki kuch implications bhi hongi uska kuch result bhi hoga isliye ye sari cheeze jo hain ye bahut zaruri hain ki aap samjhe as a writer ताकि आपके पढ़ने वालों को भी क्लियर हो कि आपने क्यों लिखा है किस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में लिखा है और आपके डॉक्यूमेंट जो है वो क्लियर हो थिंग्स विच कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू कॉन्टेक्सुअल क्लैरिटी आर क्वेश्चंस लाइक व्हाट इज प्रॉम्प्टिंग यू टू राइट व्हिच बेसिकली मींस व्हाई आर यू राइटिंग वट इज योर पर्पज वट डू यू होप टू अचीव थ्रू दिस राइटिंग हुज वर्क हैज प्रोसीडेड uh uh your writing and it ha- whose work has influenced you any was there any work done on this topic or this area before you which has influenced you that is important because then you will need to refer to that um, or maybe you will assume that your readers know of that work what is the organizational and intellectual context uh, of your problem uh, that you're writing about now you can achieve contextual clarity by answering all these questions in your introductions problem statements and in your citations and references etc uh you don't have to allude to them directly all the time but you need to be clear about them and you need to make sure that they are somehow 
that your introductions and uh, citations, etc., are somehow answering all these questions. You provide answers to these questions in introductions, uh, problem statements, citations, and other references. But this doesn't mean that you need to write about them or you need to answer them directly all the time. A lot of the times you will just allude to them or you will just refer to them, but you need to be clear yourself what you are referring to so, so that your purpose, uh, what is prompting you to write, uh, any work that has influenced you and the context of your problem is clear to the reader as well. What about conciseness? Why do we consider that important when we're uh, uh, writing uh, technical documents? Why is it important to learn the strategies of conciseness? Why does conciseness have such a special value in technical fields? Writers are often tempted to include everything that could be relevant to their subject or everything that they know uh, in the document rather than merely uh, including things that are relevant to the communication task at hand. So a lot of the times, as writers, we are tempted that whatever we know, we should show our knowledge, and we try to include that. We forget that whatever we might know is not necessarily important for the communication task right now. इस डॉक्यूमेंट के अंदर आ जाए हम इसको कहीं ना कहीं इसको बीच में फिक्ट कर लें ताकि हमारे पढ़ने वाले एक तो ये बहुत बार ख्वाहिश होती थी कि हम हमारा जो डॉक्यूमेंट पढ़ रहे हैं वो इंप्रेस हो जाएंगे कि हमें कितना आता है लेकिन हम ये भूल जाते हैं कि वो शायद हमारे पढ़ने वाले को ये चीज इररेलेवेंट लगे और ये जो हम अभी एक डॉक्यूमेंट लिख रहे हैं उसमें इस चीज की कोई जरूरत नहीं है ये इररेलेवेंट है हमारे रीडर के लिए तो इसलिए बजाय इसके कि वो इंप्रेस होगा वो हमारा इंप्रेशन और बुरा ही पड़ेगा सो देयरफॉर द कंसाइज डॉक्यूमेंट इज अ पीस ऑफ राइटिंग दैट शुड कन्वे ओनली द मटेरियल दैट इज नीडेड एट दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट एट द लेवल ऑफ द होल डॉक्यूमेंट कंसाइजनेस इज हेल्प्ड मोस्ट बाय फोकस द नैरोइंग ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट स्कोप टू अ मैनेजेबल प्रॉब्लम एंड रिस्पांस इफ यू एज अ राइटर can find the focus of your problem what it is about your particular topic that you want to write about what is the problem that you want to target and and narrow the problem in its scope not talk about the problem in such a uh, large context or large detail that it cannot be managed in one document you need to narrow it down to a particular focus that will help your document in being concise uh, preparing a clear introduction and developing a detailed outline are two strategies that give you control over document length and scope so if you've got a clear outline point by point aapne ek outline banayi hui hai apne document mein aur aapne introduction shuru mein clear likha hai apne objectives clearly us introduction mein define kiye hain to aapke liye bahut aasani ho jayegi apne ek apne document ko concise rakhne mein aur point se na hate aap ye aapke liye bahut aasan ho jayega Uh, you also need to identify and eliminate material that is not necessary to support your claims. अगर आप अपने document में कोई ऐसी दलील दे रहे हैं या कोई ऐसी चीज वाजे कर रहे हैं जिसके लिए आपने एक, uh, additional information दी है उसको चीज को वाजे करने के लिए तो बहुत जरूरी है कि आप ये देखेंगे जो आप additional information दे रहे हैं अपने claim को वाजे करने के लिए वो कितनी जरूरी है वो कितनी relevant है और कितनी detail में उसकी जरूरत है बहुत बार यह होता है कि आप लोग ज्यादा एक्सप्लेनेशन दे देते हैं और इतनी ज्यादा एक्सप्लेनेशन की जरूरत नहीं होती सो so, इसलिए उसको अननेसेसरी मटेरियल को आपको जो फालतू मटेरियल है उसको आपको हटाना होगा अपने डॉक्यूमेंट में से ऑल्सो यू नीड टू लुक फॉर सेक्शन इंक्लूडिंग अपेंडिसिस विच आर नॉट एसेंशियल टू योर वर्क अगर आपके कोई भी सेक्शन है कोई चैप्टर्स हैं पैराग्राफ्स हैं अपेंडिक्स uh, में आपने कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन डाली हुई है जो आपके काम के साथ इतनी काम में अपने आपके डॉक्यूमेंट में होना इतना जरूरी नहीं है तो बेहतर है कि इसको हटा दिया जाए अगर आपको एक बार भी लगे कि ये चीज शायद हमने एक्स्ट्रा लिख दी है तो उसको कम कर दें ग्राफिक्स आर अ पावरफुल एड टू कंसाइसनेस बिकॉज दे कट डाउन ऑन वर्ड्स दे कट डाउन ऑन द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोज दैट इज नेसेसरी टू डिस्क्राइब ऑब्जेक्ट्स टू डिवेलप योर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स टू टू डिस्क्राइब प्रोसेस दे ऑल्सो हेल्प इन समराइजिंग डेटा and in demonstrating relationships so a lot of the time if you want your document to be concise then uh, using graphs tables figures uh, are is a very good aid is, they are very good tools so you can use them to make your document concise 
and rely less on prose. But obviously, you cannot use graphs for, to explain all kind of material. So you have to be selective in where you're using graphs and where you're using prose. And also, you need to be careful that the graphics that you're using are actually suitable for the information that you are projecting. How would you make your document more concise? We've talked about graphs. Conciseness could also uh, require careful uh, revising. You would, once you've written your document, uh, you need to revise it, you need to go over it once again, and you need to then see what changes need to be made. Maybe there's, as we talked about graphics, maybe there's text that needs to be replaced for graphs. You might not have thought of it in the first instance. You need to f become familiar with the strategies for reducing wordiness. Uh, look for ways of cutting useless words, sentences, sections from the document. If you feel that you're using too many words to explain one thing, cut that down. If you feel that there are too many sections which are irrelevant or if they are sentences which are too long or irrelevant, you need to cut those down. Coherence is another factor which is very important in uh, writing technical documents and professional documents. Coherence is the quality of hanging together, of your writing being together, being stuck together so that it does not seem as if you are writing about different things and it does not seem choppy or it does not seem that you are taking jumps from one idea to another. It's basically providing the reader an easy path to follow. Writers promote coherence by making their material logically and stylistically consistent. Jo bhi aapke material mein information hai, usme uska jo matlab hai, jo logic hai, wo saath saath aani chahiye. Jo stylistic components aap use kar rahe hai, style ki components jo aapki writing mein hai, wo bhi ek jaise hone chahiye. Ye nahi ke aapke ek paragraph mein ek writing style hai, ek tone hai, aur dousre paragraph mein dousri tone hai. Ek paragraph ke shuru mein toh aap bhoat formal thai, aur by the end of the paragraph aap informal ho gai hai, toh wo aapke stylistically hai. Coherent nahi hoga paragraph. Uh, coherence is also achieved by organizing and expressing ideas in specific manner, uh, manner in specific patterns. When we talked about uh, earlier, we talked about uh, using a dividing and alternating pattern of comparison. Now, if you want your document to be coherent, then if you've chosen a dividing pattern, then you will stick to a dividing pattern. If you've chosen an alternating pattern, then you will stick to an alternative pattern for that document. ऐसे नहीं हो सकता कि आप alternating pattern में तीन points तो आप alternating pattern में बताएं और फिर बाकी आप dividing pattern पे आ जाएं वो writer जो reader है वो उससे confuse होगा इसलिए coherent document वो होगा कि consistency रहे throughout आपके document में and also efforts to emphasize the relationships among the elements of a document strengthen its impact जो भी relationships हैं different elements में आपस में एक document के different chapters की आपस में जो relationship है ये different पैराग्राफ्स में आपस में जो रिलेशनशिप है अगर आप एक एफर्ट करें कि वो रिलेशनशिप वाजे हो तो आपके डॉक्यूमेंट में जो कोहेरेंस uh, है वो बढ़ जाएगी इट आल्सो इंक्रीजेस द रीडर्स एबिलिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड योर टॉपिक बिकॉज इट हैज इंक्रीज द फ्लो ऑफ ऑफ व्हाट यू हैव रिटन इट इंक्रीज इट इंप्रूव द रीडेबिलिटी ऑफ योर मटीरियल कोहेरेंस इज स्पेशली वैल्यूड इन टेक्निकल कम्युनिकेशन एंड राइटिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द इनहेरेंट कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट फॉर uh, writing which is written for uh, lay people, for people who have no expert knowledge, uh, generally the topics are easy. But when it is uh, when writing is done for technical uh, a technical audience, the concepts that need to be explained are more complicated, and therefore it is even more important that coherence is present in your writing, that your document is coherent, and you use all the strategies we talked about to achieve this coherence, so that. Because the um, text is heavy in terms of the content it has, at least if you are writing it in a coherent manner, then it uh, serves as a tool for your audience to understand what you have written. At the level of the whole document, coherence helps to provide the larger picture in which the connections amongst the parts of a document are made clear to the audience uh, by the writer. And it also helps the readers in the sense that it gives them a road map to help them anticipate the content of your work. A lot of the times in your writing you refer forward 
to what you will be writing. You indicate first that in the next section, in the next paragraph, or you use words like this, or you write such a word that the reader is aware that the next word is going to be the next word or the next paragraph is going to be the next word or the next word is going to be the next word or the next word is going to be the next word. تو یہ پھر آپ اپنے آڈینس کو ایک میپ دکھا رہے ہیں ایک روڈ میپ ان کے لئے بنا رہے ہیں جس سے ان کو پڑھنے میں آسانی ہوتی ہے ابسٹریکٹس کلیر ٹائٹلز انٹرڈکشنز پرابلم سٹیٹمنٹس آل پروموٹ کوہیرنس بائی لنکنگ ویریس پارٹس آف اپیس آف رائٹنگ ان سب کی وجہ سے ابسٹریکٹ ہو گیا کلیر ٹائٹلز آپ کے ہو گیا یا آپ نے شروع میں انٹرڈکشن ڈالا ہو یا پرابلم سٹیٹمنٹ آپ نے کلیرلی سٹیٹ کی ہو ان سب کی وجہ سے آپ کے جو ڈاکیومنٹ ہے اس کی کوہیرنس بڑھتی ہے کیونکہ یہ آپ کے جو ڈاکیومنٹ ہے اس کی اس کے ڈیفرنٹ پارٹس کی آپ اس میں ریلیشنشپ کلیر کرتے ہیں اور ان کو ایک لنک پروائیڈ کرتے ہیں The paragraph however is one of the most powerful instruments of coherence یہ سو سارے میں نے باتیں جو سارے ایریاز پہلے بتائے وہ بھی امپورٹنٹ ہیں بہت کوہیرنس میں لیکن سب سے زیادہ جو آپ کو ایمفیسائز کرنا ہے جس چیز پہ وہ آپ کی پیراگراف کنسٹرکشن اور پیراگراف سٹرکچر ہے کیونکہ اگر وہ آپ کا کوہیرنٹ نہ ہوا یا اگر وہ آپ کا ٹائٹلی نیٹ نہیں ہوگا تو آپ کے ڈاکیومنٹ میں کتنی بھی ہیڈنگز ہوں ابسٹریکٹ ہو پرابلم سٹیٹمنٹس لکھی بھی ہوں کانٹنٹس کا ٹیبل ہو کچھ بھی ہو اگر آپ کے پیراگرافز اچھے نہیں ہیں تو آپ کا جو ڈاکیومنٹ ہے وہ کوہیرنٹ نہیں ہوگا and by organizing material into a topic sentence in a paragraph and then in supporting sentences you are pulling the paragraph material together so it's important to make sure that every paragraph has a topic sentence and those topic sentences are then supported by the supporting sentences and so that the various forms of the concept uh, concepts are developed properly. So it is necessary that the paragraph that you have in the first sentence, which is generally the beginning sentence, which we call topic sentence, is necessary. Because in that topic sentence, we have to learn to learn what the topic of this paragraph will be about. And you also know that you have to keep your topic in this paragraph. From this topic sentence, it is also clear that the concepts of your concepts are clear. کلیر ہو جاتے ہیں کہ اس پیراغراف میں کیا بات ہونی ہے اور پھر جو سپورٹنگ سینٹنسز ہیں جو پیراغراف میں باقی کے سینٹنسز ہیں مزید وہ سب اس ٹوپک سینٹنس سے ریلیٹڈ ہوتے ہیں پیراغراف ڈیویلپمنٹ is achieved partly through the specific strategies of exemplification, analysis, comparison and contrast, definition, enumeration and description جو پیراغرافز ہوتے ہیں وہ زیادہ تر یہی چھے پیٹنز کو فالو کرتے ہیں یا ایک پیراغراف میں ایکزمپلیفیکیشن ہوتی ہے جس میں ایکزامپلز استعمال کیے ہوئے ہوتے ہیں یا انیلیسز ہوتا ہے کوئی چیز انیلائز ہوئی ہوتی ہے یا کمپیرزن اور کانٹراسٹ ہوتا ہے یا کوئی چیز ڈیفائن کی گئی ہوتی ہے یا انیومیریشن پوائنٹ بائی پوائنٹ کسی چیز کی ڈسکرپشن دی ہوتی ہے یا جنرل ڈسکرپشن ایک دی ہوتی ہے پوائنٹ بائی پوائنٹ نہیں لیکن ویسے اوورال furnish distinct approaches to develop, developing ideas. Now you as a writer can decide which uh, way of developing a paragraph you wish to use for a particular paragraph. It is not necessary that all the paragraphs are one way to develop in a document. No, paragraphs will be developed in different ways. اور یہ چیز اس بات پر منصر ہو کی کہ ہر پیراغراف میں کیا چیز آپ دکھانا چاہ رہے ہیں اور کس طرح اس کو ایکسپریس کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں so all paragraphs may have different patterns of development and that pattern will be determined by the content that goes in the paragraph transitional devices also operate at the paragraph level to provide links between sentences and between paragraphs so although it's important for you to be clear in your mind what pattern of organization you're using for a paragraph It's also very important that you use transitional devices so that in the sentences within your paragraph, there are very definite links. Uh, and also you need to uh, use transitional devices between different paragraphs. So that one paragraph is finished and the other paragraph is finished, you can make a transition easy, a link. یہ نہیں کہ ایک پیراغراف ختم ہوا دوسرا شروع ہوا تو رائٹر جو پڑھنے والا ہے اس کو سمجھ ہی نہ آئی کہ یہ دوسرا پیراغراف کا پہلے پیراغراف سے لنک کیا ہے تو اس لئے وہ ٹرانزیشن جو ہے جہاں آپ ریڈر کو ایک آئیڈیا سے دوسرے آئیڈیا پہ لے کے جا رہے ہیں وہ ٹرانزیشن بہت ضروری ہے اور تاکہ ایک لنک اور فلو آپ کا برقرار رہے ہیں In terms of paragraph development 
writers use enumeration in paragraphs when they want to itemize a list, uh, itemize or list a set of properties or topics or series of some kind. Uh, enumeration is a powerful way to establish a series of observations and to emphasize each element. So they could be distinct elements that you will list and that you will emphasize by enumerating them in a paragraph. Let's have a look at what we mean when we talk about enumerating. Uh, in this paragraph that we're going to see now, the items are enumerated in a series of itemized recommendations. The, if you have instructions to have your blood cholesterol measured if you've never had it done, uh, finger prick tests at health fairs and other public places are generally fairly accurate, especially if they're offered by a hospital or other reputable health groups. When you know your number, follow these guidelines from the National uh, Cholesterol Education Program. Now this is an introduction within a paragraph and now comes the enumeration part. If your cholesterol is under 200, uh, 200 maintain a healthy lifestyle including eating a low fat diet, getting regular exercise, maintaining a health body weight and not smoking and get another test within 5 years. If your cholesterol is between 200 and 239, have a second test performed and average the results if that number fa uh, falls in the same range and if you do have uh, any form of uh, cardiovascular disease, change your diet to improve your cholesterol. In addition, eliminate any other risk factors you have and get tested again in about one year. If your cholesterol is 240 or more, your physician should order a more detailed cholesterol analysis and recommend therapy based on the results. You should begin a cholesterol improving diet immediately. Now if you see in this example, all these three points, if your cholesterol is under 200, between 200 and 239, if your cholesterol is 240 or more, all these three points are listed separately and they, it makes it very clear to the reader that the writer is talking about three different scenarios. So instead of ha just talking about them generally, the writer has enumerated them, put them as separate points, talked about them in specific detail. There's a link because they're all talking about cholesterol. There's a link to the way they've been written as well. If you notice, the language is similar, the sentence patterns are similar. But the scenarios are different, obviously, because each scenario is talking about a different cholesterol level. But instructions are following the same pattern. Now, it's not necessary that enumeration patterns are always in bullet form. Enumerated paragraphs could also be in a paragraph form. You don't have to set them aside as bullets or numbers. Uh, you could enumerate things by saying firstly, secondly, thirdly, for example, or in the first place, in the second place, and that is also enumeration. Exemplification is used to clarify uh, your topic statement, and generally exemplification would be used in uh, as examples. In the, in the paragraph that you're going to see, the topic sentence is supported in examples that illustrate, support, and clarify the main point. Vitamins and minerals can be added to enrich, uh, replace nutrients lost in processing or fortify, add nutrients not normally present, uh, foods to improve their nutritional quality. Bread and cereals are usually enriched with some B vitamins and iron. Common examples of fortification include the addition of vitamin D to milk, vitamin A to margarine, vitamin C to fruit drinks, calcium to orange juice and iodine to table so iodide to table salt. Now this, if you see, you can, uh, the writer has given examples, the writer has clarified uh, terminology like enrich by giving meanings of, uh, by giving in brackets what he means, he's uh, talked about fortify, uh, given a very clear direct link to it and then gone on to examples. He's exemplifying all that he, uh, he's saying by giving you concrete terms, concrete examples that will relate to what he to, what he's trying to say and that will support his uh, his topic statement that vitamins and minerals enrich and fortify foods to improve their nutritional quality comparison and contrast is used to develop a talk, topic by examining its similarities or dissimilarities to another thing uh, similarities or dissimilarities of processes or states etc a uh, comparison emphasizes the similarities and contrast emphasizes the differences. A paragraph may use both comparison and contrast. Uh, let's have a, a look at an example where two kinds of electrical cable are compared. The aim here is to convey the superiority of A type over B type. 
for two categories of performers. The heading here is coaxial versus fiber optic cable. So obviously the heading is uh, it's clear from the title that there is a some kind of a comparison or a contrast being done. And then after colon it says comparative cable length performances. So here obviously it's even more clear by the use of the word comparative that we are comparing uh, the cable length uh, performances. For a number of critical performance characteristics, fiber optic cable offers considera considerable advantage over standard coaxial cables. The most obvious distinction between the two is the great bandwidth distance capacity of fibers. The high frequency capacity of coaxial cables decreases rapidly with increased length, but the bandwidth of a commercial fiber optic system will remain co constant with length. A commercial fiber optic system like that of Artel remains constant for a bandwidth over a distance of 4000 feet, while three different sizes of coaxial cable uh, rapidly drop in less than half the distance. Now this, as you can see, is uh, a paragraph where the two different types of cables have been compared to each other by looking at different aspects, different elements uh, of, uh, of the cables themselves. The different elements that are present are things like the length, the bandwidth, etc. And these have been compared from cable A to cable B or the uh, coaxial cable to the fiber optic cable. The use of transitional words and phrases greatly adds to the coherence uh, of a piece of writing. And uh, writers need to use transitional words and phrases to clarify and smooth the movement from idea to idea. And let's have a look at some examples. A, a, a paragraph which has weak transition would be something like, reducing drag in an aerospace vehicle is an important design consideration with financial and operational consequences. Poorly designed rocket fuselage scan triple uh, fuel and launch costs. Drag increases stress on key joints. This proposed project will develop a model to reduce aerodynamic drag on the RX100. Now let's have a look at the same paragraph but with better transitional devices, an improved version of the same paragraph. Reducing drag in an aerospace vehicle is an important design consideration. For example, poorly designed rocket fuselage can triple fuel and launch costs. Moreover, drag increases stress on key joints. Therefore, this proposed project will develop a model to reduce aerodynamic drag on the RX100. Now, as you see, words and phrases like, for example, moreover, and therefore, have provided better links between the sentences. And these are the transitional devices that have been used by the writer to make the writing more coherent. So with this, we come to the end of this lecture, uh, lecture seven, where you learned the importance of accuracy, clarity, conciseness, and coherence. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.